So Rocky, what's your favorite part about working in porn? Um, oh my gosh. Oops, excuse me, I burped. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say it was really nice to just have a job I wanted to go to that put me in a position to be like financially independent um, and like time-wise independent and it's actually really good for my mental health. Mm. It's like a lot of things. So how so? Because I mean, as you know, the many, you know, anti-porn crusaders would say <laughs> that porn is the exact opposite. It's terrible for your mental health. Um, it gave me a lot of autonomy over my own body. Not that I didn't have it, but it gave me like a platform to show that I had autonomy. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I never did anything I didn't want to do. And I was always given the opportunity to say no. Mm -hmm. And that was really nice. You don't get that. Like the real world tells you no all the time, yeah. even if it's disrespectful to you, you mm -hmm. know, and in porn, everyone was just so, and is so concerned about safety and boundaries and consent. Um, so that was really nice. And then, yeah, I just like never would really like my jobs. I'd get burnt out and upset. And I was just, I just felt like I was like struggling forever. Mm -hmm. Um, and had changed careers so many times and was just perpetually upset about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this job just like felt right. And I could choose to work or not. I can be available or not. Obviously if it's booked, I have to show up. But if something's happening... But you can choose to take the booking or not take the booking. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if something's going on in my life where I'm upset and I think the shoot will be fun and nice and distracting, I get to do that. Or if I'm just completely incapable of performing, um, I can be like, you know what? I'm not available this week. Yeah. Um, and that was really, really freeing to not have to show up for minimum wage. You know, I went to beauty school and I was making minimum wage for years. Yeah. And I was, I would see how much I was charging people... And like just the commission scales and everything is built in such a way that you have to make so much money and kill yourself at work to make more than minimum wage. Even if you're getting the commission, it evens out, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so to just know what I'm getting paid and show up and do that. And then, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. I spend a lot of time on the computer and social media and all that stuff, but I didn't have to show up every single day mm -hmm. for 80 bucks. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I was just someone who was wired and able and willing and wanting to do porn. Um, so it's not like I was upset about porn, but the money made it okay or anything like that. It was just everything worked out and I made good money. And I was like, wow, I've loved all of my jobs and this one actually pays my bills. Mm -hmm. So... So it sounds like there's like a couple of different factors as to what made your experience positive, because I always want to acknowledge that, you know, there are people who come into porn who have bad experiences for mm -hmm. sure. Cause I don't think it's the industry is right for everybody. Right. Um, so you said that you always, you know, worked on sets that were professional and that were safe and respected your boundaries. Um, so I know that you kind of started well, your journey started at kink, mm -hmm. you know, just being at that, that part, the upper floor party. Did you work a lot like in BDSM at the beginning? Yes. So I think I, from all my talks to so many different people who are in the BDSM community, despite what I think most, most people from the outside think, because mm -hmm. it looks so like intense and crazy and you tie people up because I think the scenes are so intense and crazy. The level of communication and the boundary setting is really like the best in BDSM than it is in like say other vanilla parts of the adult industry. And I have found as somebody who works pretty much exclusively in like the vanilla part mm -hmm. that especially when we had that whole like kind of me too wave that came yeah. through and suddenly, you know, a lot of my clients started to recognize like, wow, we really need to make sure that we like discuss yeah. boundaries. Um, so much of that, we, there was so much to learn from the BDSM community. Um, and so it sounds like, you know, being in that environment, like, you know, you, you had that. And, um, do you think that you also just met the right people first? So you were able to like ch pick and choose the sets that you were on and, and you, you worked with good people because, you know, we do hear the stories about the mm -hmm. girls that come in, they don't know anything. They get paired up with like some shitty agent who sends them to like these really skeezy sets mm -hmm. where they don't give a shit about you and they don't respect your boundaries and they intimidate you into doing things that you don't want to do. 
Um, so do you think that your experience like was kind of unique in that way? Um, I think that I like in the, as of turning 18 grew up, Mm -hmm. um, in the BDSM community before I came into porn productions. Mm -hmm. And so I already had been taught and I also had, I think that's where it starts is I met the right people at that point Mm -hmm. who taught me consent and boundaries and communication and all of that. Um, cause I know people have a bad experience in that world as well. And I got very lucky cause that's when I was, you know, uneducated or whatever and incapable of like navigating those situations. Mm-hmm. I had really good educators. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I came into porn, yes, I just kind of ended up with more of those people. Um, but I also came in later in life. I don't know how old I started. I'm sorry, 24, 25, something like that. Okay. So I'm like seven years older than these 18 year old girls who don't know what's going on and, Mm. you know, see a thousand bucks and they're like, you can do anything. And then they are upset after, which is not their fault. It's they're being taken advantage of, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was like 24, 25, able to advocate for myself. Seven years doing BDSM as a bottom. So really needing to know how to be safe. Um, But I mean, I've walked out of sets that were absolutely horrible Mm. um, and I can see how that could have gone terribly wrong if I didn't. So it's not like I've never ended up in a bad situation. Right. I just was able to catch it in time yeah. and not have that super terrible experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I walked into a set one time and this man was just so, I don't even remember, like suddenly the talent canceled. It was talent from a different country who didn't have a Twitter, but he was real talent. So he just threw a name out basically and he canceled, but the director is magically tested and he's just going to do it. And it's, basically like a casting couch, facial abuse type situation. And it was to be a rough scene. And he's like, I'll just shoot it and film it with you. And I was like, no, thanks. And I stopped writing my information on the paper. I didn't even want him to have my information on my release form. And then he actually laid cash out on the table and looked at me and said, you're telling me you're not, you don't want this, that you don't need this money. And I was like, nope. (laughs) <laughs> and I walked out. Um, so that exists. Do you think that that, that was on purpose? Because I f- Absolutely. feel like it was. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think I've heard that trick before. Yeah. That performer didn't exist for us. Yeah. He was never booked. Um, I reached out. Charles Dara, actually, sweetheart, saw me tweet about it and texted me and was like, who was that? I've been around forever. I know basically enough to help you figure out if you just lost a real job. Mm -hmm. And I told him, he's like, I've never heard of that man. I sent him the number. He's like, the number's not in my phone. And he checked with probably Donnie Rock and a few other people. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I am so happy you left. So that was really nice of him. I think it was Charles. It might've been Donnie and then Charles. Either way, it was those those two. They're They're like the same person. Yeah, (laughs) Those two checked on me. Um, So yeah, it exists. But I think that my, yeah, my BDSM community taught me and then my intro to porn was very safe and I just didn't end up in a lot of bad situations. Mm-hmm. Had even, I had to walk out of multiple scenes like that in the beginning, I probably would have said like, porn is bullshit, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Um, but it was one out of, you know, however many. I did. Right, right. How did you get that job? Do you have an agent at the time? I just signed with an agent for the first time starting mm-hmm. this year. Okay. So everything I've done was on my own um, and it was grueling to... <laughs> sort through all of the yeah. fake producers, yeah. um, which is, I'm just at this point bored of it. So I hired an agent mostly so that I don't have to do that. And I don't have to like hit up every director all the yeah. time. Right. Um, but yeah, new girls that either have a bad agent or don't have an agent definitely, definitely end up in bad situations. And I think it's partially not their fault, but they're, they're, being misguided or misunderstanding of mm-hmm. what they're agreeing to and ending up in the wrong places and and also the people pretending to mm-hmm. be in porn. Yeah, I mean, it's like you hear those stories and of course those are the stories that the mainstream media latches on to because mm-hmm. they always want to push this narrative that porn is terrible all around, everybody's the same, we're all, you know. Um, but what they don't see is like, that's not actually our, no. that's not our business. Like that person, I don't consider it to be in porn, whether they make porn and they have a website or yeah. whatever, that person is not in porn and therefore should never reflect on us. Right. Which is the horrible thing because they're like, well, this guy did this and this girl did this and whatever. And 
And we're all like, that's not us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not how we operate. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we definitely get a bad name from people that aren't even really part of our industry. And the thing that, cause I've thought a lot about this, like how could we prevent those stories from happening? You know, how could we prevent young girls from coming into the industry and getting, um, misguided and getting, you know, um, represented by the wrong people sent to the wrong shoots and you know there's just like there's no media literacy about porn mm -hmm. and and about how to get in safely i think because the mainstream media you know has this one-sided view of porn as being evil and being degrading and being exploitative so you know they never feature you know like it would be nice to have like a story out there or even if you googled like you know like how can I get into porn and have like a legitimate producer or a legitimate yeah. organization from the industry say, hey, let's give you like information that will help mm -hmm. you um, decide A, if you wanna actually be in porn, because mm -hmm. you know, we've said it's not for everybody. Um, and then B, if you do like how to navigate this world safely, because yeah, it's, you know, it's a, I mean, we, we're, we self-regulate, right? But it's not really like, there's no like overseeing body that absolutely mm -hmm. regulates everything. So you can end up with the wrong people. Um, I just wish that there was some way that we could, there could be like a one source place that, that people would find when they, but yeah. it's just like, where do you go and look for that? If you don't know anything about the porn industry? Well, and then we also, I feel like it's almost, we keep it exclusive to protect ourselves because if we gave them all of the information, mm -hmm. anyone who, didn't actually read all of it, didn't actually decide if they want to be in porn yeah. or if they're a respectful person, would take those resources, come wreak havoc, and then eventually fizzle out, which we see all the time. Right. People show up in the industry, we're like, whoa, you're not great. And then they disappear. <laughs> and so I feel like if we gave everyone the steps to show up and made it super easy, there would be more of that, which is also a problem because I want to educate people all the time. I have random dudes ask me all the time. And I am guilty of, I just say, get an agent. Yeah. And I don't tell them like what agent to trust or anything because I'm like, I don't want to invite you in and have you say, I gave you the information. I don't even know you. And then have yeah. you treat someone incorrectly. And so I don't know. I, I think there is like trials that you have to get through to be in porn that prove that you are the type of person who can be here. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think there needs to be more information. So maybe once we see someone who's actually found their way in, who's actually going to work and just, if they ask a question, answer it. Like I do that all the time. I make myself available to any new person who seems like they're actually trying and not just trying to get paid for sex, you know, right. like it's more yeah. than that. Yeah. And so anyone who seems genuinely interested in making this their career, I'll be like, Hey, if you have any questions, like, here's some agents to trust, you know, like if you're not sure about a company, like if any person, no matter who it is or what their name is or how long they've been around, any person emails me and says, have you worked for this person? I will tell them my exact experience. Mm -hmm. I think that would be one of the resources that should be told about more is like, if you want to get into porn, email resources, like that mm -hmm. is the biggest thing. And also like your family's going to find out. <laughs> yeah. Number one. Yeah. Though to be fair though, like a lot of girls that I've interviewed who have become really successful and have come into this with like a mind of like, this is a career choice. And, mm -hmm. and I actually really want to approach this in a professional aspect, have done their research and have found like the right people to ask. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, I mean, to be honest, it's, I guess if you're somewhat savvy in terms of just like, looking stuff up. It's like finding a plastic surgeon, right? Yeah. You know, like if you look around enough and visit enough like websites, you're going to kind of figure out maybe who the best people mm -hmm. to consult with are and et cetera. Um, and they've been able to, you know, navigate this, but yeah, I think sometimes when you have people come in, especially if they're young, if they, um, you know, don't really have the wherewithal to do their research and they need money fast or, you know, just, generally don't make good life choices overall, mm -hmm. um, they can fall into that trap. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's a little bit naive of me to like, think that there's some way that I could like protect everybody from having a bad porn experience, but maybe that's just not, that's it would, just not it. It would be really nice, but I, I do think unfortunately if we put all the information out there, it, it just leaves the floodgates open for more bad things to happen, yeah. which sucks. Yeah. 
because if, if you give everyone the information, they'll exploit it because lots of humans are not nice people. <laughs> this is true. I mean, you can exploit it in every industry, right? Mm-hmm. The porn industry is no different. Right. It's just like the, it's about sex. So people like to demonize it because mm-hmm. we, we as a society are afraid of sex yes, I know. so much. Oh man. <laughs>